Hey everybody, it's Pinball Rob here with another restoration video. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the restoration that was done for Matt of Harry. And unlike other long-winded videos, I'm going to take you through just a bunch of uh, before and after shots and explain sort of what I did. Uh, Matt of Harry, great old game, uh, 1978, so it's 37 years old. Um, uh, ranks ninth as far as the most produced pinball machines in history. Uh, of course, Adam's family was number one. Uh, the theme is, theme is based on Matt Harry, who was a spy uh, way back in the uh, early 1900s, uh, who was ultimately executed by Firing Squad. So nice little title for everybody to uh, to play. Anyway, great old game. It was one of the first in the Solid State series, so it still had the... Uh, uh, the chime box, it didn't have digital sound, but it did have uh, the valley boards and whatnot in the in the back glass. So I'm going to take you through some of the things that uh, that were done. Uh, the play field uh, needed some work. There was some touch-up work that uh, that we did on the play field. You can see it here. Uh, some of the uh, most obvious spots were, were fixed and updated. Some of them weren't, uh, only because the colors couldn't be matched directly, so uh, they were left... Uh, to their original, but you can see here just how nice uh, the uh, the touch-ups were. Flippers uh, were in uh, pretty poor shape. You can see on the left side, uh, the bottom flipper uh, was burnt. The top one uh, was working, but it was pretty weak. Uh, and in most of my restorations, even though there's a lot of discussions around replacing the coils, I replace the coils, uh, I replace the bats, and I rebuild with new switches and uh, uh, new bushings to really give these uh, these flippers uh, the rework that they need. You know, again, 38 years old, these things are hit millions of times over the years. So it's just a really smart thing to um, rebuild your flippers, throw out the old coils, get rid of the switches, uh, and uh, your game's gonna play a heck of a lot nicer. Uh, here's another shot of some playfield touch-up. This was done with an acrylic pen. Uh, you know, it's not perfect, but uh, it doesn't draw your eye to it. That's, I think, the big thing. Power board replacement. So in most of these Valley games and, and uh, games of this era, they all have a rectifier power board that connects directly to the transformer, which is uh, in the caged area on the right-hand side. So on the left side, you see the original rectifier board. You see the three screws in the middle. Uh, behind the board were the actual uh, uh, rectifiers. Uh, and you can kind of see if you look in the little inset picture uh, how burnt the connectors were. Re Repinning connectors is uh, a great thing to do. So if you haven't uh, learned how to do Molex connectors, you can see on the right hand side, new board, all cleaned up, all new Molex connectors, uh, and try Furicon uh, connector uh, pieces for, uh, for this game. Back glass, uh, quite often the back glass in these machines needs to be restored or at least uh, repaired. It, on the left side, you can see the uh, great amount of damage to the, uh, to the back glass. Uh, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the paint had uh, flaked off and was continuing to flake off. So we clear coated with triple thick from Krylon. Uh, a couple coats of that on the back, being careful not to uh, get Krylon where the digital displays shine through. Uh, and then uh, added, uh, added some acrylic paint to the back glass, uh, to the areas uh, that were, were uh, showing through. It was pretty much a, a problem when you were looking at the glass from the front with any of uh, the bulbs behind, because the bulbs would shine through where all the holes were. Didn't look very good. Looks like a million bucks now. Bumper cap uh, replacements, uh, you know, not a very difficult thing to do. Uh, but sure make a big difference. Um, I'll show you later on. Uh, we updated the play field to LEDs. And, of course, they don't heat up like uh, the incandescent bulbs. And you can see on the left some of the damage from the heat uh, in the pop bumper cap. So they were, they were all replaced. Cabinet touch-up. Uh, this is always a, uh, a, a smart thing to do. First thing that we do is we use a, an industrial cleaner uh, to clean off the years of grime that are actually on the surface of the uh, of the uh, cabinet. That makes a big difference just uh, just cleaning it up. You can see on the left hand side a lot of the grunge that's 
sort of dripping down from where the buttons were. Also replaced the uh, the button assemblies uh, on the side here uh, and touched up with uh, with acrylic paint. So it looks uh, looks a lot better. As I mentioned, we replaced just the Playfield LEDs. Didn't think that this game needed full LED conversion. Didn't really need uh, LEDs underneath the Playfield. Um, you know, the back glass has been protected. Didn't really need LEDs back there. So at this point, we just did some nice color upgrades uh, to the Playfield. You can see using themed colors uh, from the Matahari Playfield, the original artwork, uh, makes a big difference uh, on you know, how the game looks. <laughs> One of my favorite things is cleaning up the lock bar. Uh, the lock bar uh, is usually in horrible shape after years of people spilling beer and vomit and all sorts of things, <laughs> whiskey, uh, onto, the, uh, onto the game. It all accumulates in the lock bar. Um, the locking mechanism actually underneath here. So that's one of the things that I like to uh, uh, do early on. Makes me feel better is to uh, shine up that old lock bar mechanism and also provide uh, some new custom apron cards for the apron, as well as in this case, uh, actually new Bally stickers uh, for the apron. So you can see it came up pretty nicely. And so you're seeing the, the cleaned up lock bar custom uh, stickers on the lock bar as per the original game. New original Bally uh, uh, themed stickers for this particular game using the game colors. And then again, two uh, custom uh, apron cards that uh, we designed and printed here. Ah yes, the computer board. On the left you see what we normally see in a lot of these older games. We see a lithium battery or a rechargeable battery. This one looks like it was a GE that was uh, soldered to the board 38 years ago. Uh, guess what? It's dead. And uh, uh, you know, if you're, if you're lucky it hasn't uh, leaked and uh, leaked at battery acid over the board. Uh, this one wasn't too, too bad, but you can see from the red arrows that I've got there, um, the battery, and then, uh, you know, sort of along the bottom how, how the board was uh, corroded. And that's a, that's a ground plane, so that's an important thing to make sure is, uh, is done properly and correctly. So the board was repaired, the uh, lithium, uh, the old battery was removed and disposed of, and a new coin cell lithium battery was put in place. So that will never uh, ever leak or corrode uh, again. So that's always a good thing to do. Plus the game was, uh, the computer board was, all the uh, ICs were tested and whatnot. Okay, yeah, here's just some of the games. Here's a little play. video. As the uh, same chime. So this is an early solid state game. Computers in the back, chime box in the uh, cabinet. Eight drop targets. Number of bumper uh, thumper bumpers, as they're called. And all in all, a pretty fun game. So, so there you go, uh, Mata Harry, ready for another 40 years uh, in uh, this customer's basement. It was a uh, uh, pretty awesome game to work on, uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in, uh, in the next restoration. Let me know if you like this format. Um, I'll give it a shot and see what happens. But anyway, thanks for uh, thanks for watching.